uh, sit here and I cry sometimes. But, you know, I'm just praying to the Creator all the time, you know, make things better for us out here. That's all I ask. Let's go back home. That's all I'm asking. My name is Jonathan. I'm a former member of the Red Alert Aboriginal Street Gang. I basically got involved in a gang when I moved to Edmonton back in the late 90s. Uh, ended up in the Edmonton Remand Center and from there quickly ended up uh, racking up a lot of serious charges that landed me in the Edmonton Institution. In total, I spent uh, five and a half years at the Edmonton Institution. I was 20 years old when I went in and I was maybe 160 pounds soaking wet. When I got out, I was, I was a big individual. My behavior and the penitentiary mentality and all the aggression and violence that goes on out there basically came with me to the street. And I terrorized my community through the 90s and it was just a cycle that I'd had to stop somewhere or else I would end up doing a life sentence or shot and killed. There was a lot of money back in the 90s and stuff. There was a lot of oil royalties and stuff like that. So a lot of the major gangs like the IPs, the RAs and the Warriors saw that basically as a, an opportunity to come out here and to make a lot of money. And that's basically what they did. And now 10 years later, um, there's shootings almost on a regular basis. There's a baby getting shot. There's houses, people getting hit, drive-by shootings, people getting stabbed, people getting kid, killed. The saying is not babies having babies out here, it's, it's basically babies killing babies. Kevin came running all across here. Did you hear that gunshot? And then my, my granddaughter was sitting here and I went and looked at him. I was wondering why it really went quiet and pale. Here I went and looked at him. Shit, he, he already got shot right on the stump chest. Hey, right there. It happened right here. Asia is good. She's um, recovered well and quickly. We're just sitting down, eating, sitting down, having having supper. It's still kind of a blur, and I still really don't like going through it. I was just next door, and they phoned me and they told me, "Oh, your daughter's been shot." And I was like, no, I just came from over there. And sure enough, all the ambulance and the cops were already over there. I don't want Asia to remember any of it. So I, I'm just playing it like she's at home and nothing happened. And hopefully that she won't remember any of this. Yeah, there's, we're just taking it day by day. This community here has started in the last uh, months to clean up, take back uh, what belongs to them. As uh, A lot of the houses are covered with graffiti. Some of the houses are uh, uh, taken over by a group called the Indian Posse. You can see the signs on the, on the wall. That house there has been totally cleaned up. Uh, uh, the graffiti and the white has been totally covered up. That's a big change. I bet you by the end of the day or by the end of the week it'll be, it'll be rewritten again. But if these people step up and, uh, and do their thing again, uh, they want to live here. They want to be free. I'm Genevieve Rabbit, and we're working in Hobima. We're taking down these burnt down houses. We have to take down 29. We already took down four. So we're working for 11 weeks. I have two boys. There are two and four months. I want to see a better community so they could be raised up, not to be in gangs or anything, or drugs or those bad stuff that's that's going around. I'm gonna try to make a change, clean up this community, and try to clean up the act and other people. See if if they see us working out here and try to make a change. Um, I hope they have a change in their heart and try to do something for the community and for their kids so they could have a better place to grow up in. I think when your community looks decent, you, you feel good about where you live. Hopefully play a part in uh, having pride in where you live and who you are, that's important to people. This is the newer town site, we call these the enclaves. We had a lot of shootings in this area here. Uh, they shoot and run into different houses. We've been pretty lucky here where people call and report that they see this going on now and uh, advise us where people are going. 
I think we have to really, really hit rock bottom. And to me, this is it. This was it. To realize that um, we need to take control. And it can't be just one person. It has to be everyone collectively. To re revitalize the culture and the traditions, um, the ones that we need to look at are the young people now. That's where our energy should be. The ones who are from birth, you know, during the formative years to 12 years old. Because by the time they hit 13, and, and there's no um, intervention of any kind in the schools or in a home or wherever, they will have made up their mind what type of lifestyle they're going to have. And unfortunately, you know, during the days of affluence, nobody taught them that or nobody spoke about these things. They're spiritually hungry. They're emotionally hungry because they haven't been nurtured the way they should have been, rather than the TV and the fancy toys. It doesn't give you anything. They have that emptiness. I've talked to a few of the young people that have come through our offices here. And all I can do is encourage and provide what I can to fulfill a little of what they need. It's sad. We want our children back. That's what I said, you know, our youth. We want them back. We want them to come back home. They're lost. That's what it is. They're just hurting, you know, these gang members. They're hurting, I know. It's an uphill struggle. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some serious time to really deal with the problems out here. Us ex-gang members, you know, we've been there. We've done it all. We've seen the ups and downs of everything. And basically, we have a lot of experience in basically the gang lifestyle and the gang culture. I think some of these kids would benefit from it. You know, you can talk to maybe 50 kids in a classroom and you might get through to maybe one or two. That's a victory right there. You know, it's a small win, but the war is still going on.